Hi everybody, Shabbat Shalom, wasn't that an amazing bat mitzvah, thank you Devorah and Donovan blessing us with Hebrew, with the parasha, amen. So, I was given an instruction to keep, uh, keep it 30 minutes, so we have another 27, okay, now we got uh, a lot of guys over here, ladies and uh, sisters and brothers, we're going to talk about uh, new spaces we are uh, venturing into. Everything is scripture oriented, okay? And I want them just to tell about their passion. Uh, usually it comes with a gift I saw fit to match with that specific uh, venture they are going into, something that they approach me with. Okay, so just go ahead. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Hi. So Ruby Westbrook uh, had the prayer vision for Jewish people to come together on special days of remembrance of, to have a prayer group. So if anyone's interested in coming and join, joining us, we have a QR code down here by the Sadaka box. You can scan it and sign up and fill out the form, give us your information to join the group. But also we're going to be praying on next Shabbat during our regular prayer time. And that's going to be for the Holocaust remembrance. So next Shema. So we just wanted to invite everyone and know that's something we're going to have going on moving forward. Right, thanks. One of the things that Adam had asked me to do, because my passion is to restore Torah. It's been on my heart for years. That's restore Torah to the Christian people. The people have been stolen from, from early, early church where they were denied the truth. But we were all commanded to keep the Torah, not for a salvation issue, but for the basis of love. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So the thought was, I want to present to people this. So myself, Adam, and, and uh, Wes, and some others, we're actually putting together a small program. It'll be also, uh, you'll also be able to be part of that if you'd like. What we're doing is we're taking the New Testament and everything in the New Testament and revealing it from the Old Testament. We're going to take the Old Testament and show people from the New Testament where it reflects back to the Old Testament and show people from the Old Testament how it points to the New Testament. The old saying is the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The, old, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So that's my heart. That's our heart. And we desire that people who want to understand the truth come for, uh, get together with myself or Adam, and we'll, try, we'll point you to the direction that will be basically uh, in a midrash type form. Amen? Amen. You hear me? Okay. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Uh, this is a very exciting time in... Uh, as a congregation, we move into a, a, a new chapter as congregation, a transition from Joey to Adam, and it's been exciting, and uh, Adam has a lot of good ideas, and he asked me something, I can call it crazy, but anyways, he said he, said he wants to have like a YouTube channel for, um, for Hebrew um, teaching for Spanish-speaking speak, uh, people only, and it, to me, it was really a great idea, and, and it was very exciting, I told my wife, and you know, even though I'm not fully completely in Hebrew yet, but, but as I told Adam many times, many times that Hebrew and Spanish go right along. So many words that are connected there, and that is helping me a lot. And so we did a little, a, little, a little video yesterday, and I sent it to him, and he liked it. He put it right away in a YouTube video. It's going to help people that really want to, to know exactly who, who we are and what are we doing and why. You know, this is about worshiping the only true God, the God of Israel. And when you have the understanding of the scripture and, and you know the Hebrew language, your eye will pop up like, you know, wow, you know, this is amazing. It's just a blessing above and beyond. And we are very excited about being part of, of this new station in, in, as a congregation. So, Toda Rabba. This one works. <laughs> um, I took a few notes because I have, I think, three ministries that I kind of function in. One is the hospitality industry, which is very important in our congregation. Every Saturday or Shabbat, 
we celebrate Oneg. But we just don't do that. <laughs> we have a lot of different areas, which is all the festivals, which we did talk about today in our tourist study. So I do a lot of, I believe the Lord loves to party. And in my former life, I did a lot of partying. <laughs> but besides all of that, my degree is in hospitality management. So that has been like a very good fit for me. So we do also the Passover as a congregation co corporately, uh, which we should be doing something and announcing some of those things that we're gonna be doing. We also collaborate a lot with the MJCC. <laughs> Thank you, Phyllis. Um, so sometimes when we don't get a chance to do things corporately, we also tie in things with the MJCC. So I do work alongside with the rabbis, with also the leadership. Our next one that I also participate in, which who leads this up is actually Juanita Comer, which she sits right over there, but she doesn't want to talk. <laughs> we head up the group for 13 and 18 year olds youth ministry. I love the way um, Juanita addresses how we teach Torah. Um, we also help these students with life skills um, related to the Torah. And we review also all the festivals. So the festivals get taught and we encourage them to learn Hebrew. And we do that, well she does that, through art because I, am, I couldn't draw a stick figure, right. <laughs> However, I do get the opportunity to present to the students through object lessons. We do artwork, we do singing, dancing, and I believe we also are moving towards getting the students to start to sing as well. Um, the last one, and I kind of wrote a few notes, The last one is Jesus Jewish Roots, which is a public speaking um, category. Those of you who love to speak in public, <laughs> you can join my group. <laughs> um, however, you won't just get thrown out to the wolves. We have a wonderful mentor from DTS, which is Dallas Theological Seminary. Um, which is going to be Rabbi Valdemir Pickman. He actually is located in Germany. So this is going to be sometimes um, hands-on, actually on campus at DTS, working with the DTS students, as well as online. So we are not going to be thrown out to the wolves, so we're going to get a lot of training. Today we were in our Torah study. We went over some communication skills. So we're going to be learning about communication skills. We also are going to be... Um, honoring the Lord with this one commandment, which is a big one. You know, making sure that not only, it's so easy to talk to people that who are messianic. It's so easy to talk to people who actually believe in Yeshua, but what about the ones who don't? What about the ones who are, are, are actually Jewish, who are Orthodox, Reformed, Conservative, or even atheists who need Yeshua? So in this particular leadership area, it's actually honoring the commandment of Romans eleven fifteen, where we need to bring the Jews to jealousy. This would actually bring reconciliation, this united front by bringing Jews and Gentiles together is it definitely in God's heart. We will be learning how to speak, be like water, but in love, dropping seeds so they can germinate. This is really important, and this is the heart of God. So those of you who are interested in this particular leadership, please join me to like bring the Jews to jealousy. So I'm a little bit different vein, and I actually don't love to be up in front of people. <laughs> but you know, when the Holy Spirit fills you with something, you need to share it. And the part that I am um, operating in now is empowering words. And you may look at me and think, I don't have that gift. I don't think I can do that. But I, I want to give you a little example this morning of something that Ruach laid on my heart just this morning to paint a picture of how he just connects us to his word. And the word that he told me was that with greater anointing and revelation comes surrender and sacrifice. 
And it's been hitting me heavier all week long. And then this morning, the verse that he gave me, because we know that every word goes right back to his word. Every word that he gives us to share goes right back to the word. And this is in Romans. Let us walk properly in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and envy. Instead, put on the Lord Messiah Yeshua and stop making provision for the flesh for its cravings. Now, I read that verse, and I thought, I can pretty much scoop by on most of that. But then the very end of it says, stop making provision for the flesh for its cravings. So my family, whatever emotion we're feeling, whatever activity we're experiencing, there's food involved. And it doesn't matter the time, the day, or the hour we think of food. And I've been asking the Holy Spirit to change this appetite in me, to change this craving in me. And he did. He um, sent a friend my way who sent a tool into my hand, and he changed my appetites and my cravings. And it was because I was in the Word, looking at the Word. But then, pardon me for just a second. So there's also this call right now. So what I had to do was back what Miss Sophia was sharing with us. I had to shema. I had to hear the words. I had to listen to them, and I had to obey. So he's also given me this call to purity. And that's not a very popular stand these days. And I wasn't certain how I would fit in that category of that call. But one of the gifts that I've been giving is to see in the spirit. And there are sometimes when I come into service and I can see everything that's going on spiritually and it's angels and it's scenes and it's words and it's pictures of things that you wouldn't see in the physical. And I love it and I'm so honored to have it. But do you know, I got into some curiosity in the last few months. I had friends recommend different movies and shows, and I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not emulating everything in that movie or show, so surely it's fine for me to have some entertainment. But I want to caution you that I stopped seeing the spirit for a couple of months. And I didn't realize it was happening until I thought, huh, I haven't seen anything in a while. And I thought, wait a minute. Here comes that call to purity again, because it doesn't escape any of us. Just because we're not doing what we think is openly impure, it's something that the enemy is so sneaky in what he tries to put in. So what he told me was, he reminded me of Ezekiel 37. He wants to establish a covenant of shalom in each of us. Shalom does not have anywhere for impurity. So in order for this to be established in me and for his kingdom to grow and to be sent forth from these gifts that he gives, I have to accept the call to purity with my eyes and my ears. Do you have a deeper anointing desire? And what is he asking you to surrender or sacrifice? Now, this didn't come all at one time. This was something he poured into me over several days. But I want to encourage each of you. We all want an empowering word. But we don't just get it for ourselves. We get it so we can give to other people. So that's the part that I will be working on, is empowering words. Bienvenidos a su casa Shalom. Ustedes han escuchado de todas las cosas maravillosas que el ministerio está haciendo y ahora es mi trabajo dejarles saber que Todas las buenas ideas se van a ser traducidas en español y vamos a darle la oportunidad a todos los latinos que vengan, que se unan a nosotros, que inviten a las personas que no necesariamente hablan inglés, pero que tienen sed por Yeshua, que vengan acá, se congreguen con nosotros y podamos crecer juntos. I am welcoming all the Latino population in the Metroplex. We want to pray together and we want to move the ministry and all the beautiful things that this team is doing and that Adam is leading to be able to be translated in Spanish in real time. Queremos hacer clases en Torah, queremos traer los conocimientos básicos y aclarar todas las preguntas que ustedes puedan tener. We want to bring all the questions, we want to talk, we want to get to know each other and being able to grow together. So if you know someone who will be interested in learning, what is your faith? Why you are here? 
why you feel this love for Torah. Please let them know that we have a very good team that is working hard and we are gonna do everything we can to get the whole Latino and all the Hispanic community in the Metroplex together. Thank you. All right, everybody stand up for me. Please, come on, come on, I'm serious, stand up. Come on, y'all are falling asleep. Stretch, reach for the sky, reach for your toes. Side to side, all right, y'all can sit down. You follow directions, thank you. Before I share what I'm going to tell you, I have an announcement. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is here. Matthew 3, 2. We all know who said that. We all know that it was Yeshua's cousin, John the Baptist. For those of you who don't know me, I am the Blakenator, accompanied by my beautiful and lovely bride back there, Trier Leva. I love each and every one of you, and I need your help. In the Bible, James 2, 14 through 17 says this, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical deeds, needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. I have to be honest with y'all. I may have faith, but I don't do enough for others. I don't feel like I'm giving back enough or like Yeshua would want me to. We are all here for a reason. Everyone's reason may be different, but our purpose is the same. Community, accountability, sharing the gospel, love, and establishing a relationship with Yeshua. I've realized that coming to Sakat has been an amazing awakening for me and my family. My lovely, beloved bride and I have been coming here for about two years now. We finally feel like we are home, finally. I want to do more, though. I've been in close contact with the Arlington Police Department Behavioral Health Unit and the Homeless Unit, not only for my job working at a behavioral hospital called Hickory Trail, where I am daily seeking people who need help with mental health and substance abuse and getting them treatment. I, too, have been down this dark, dark road, so it's very dear to me. I was homeless countless times, living in my car and showering at the Jewish community center that my grandpa built and donated in Kansas City. Talk about feeling low. How do you think that made me feel? Hopeless, embarrassed, and shameful. It took me a long time to break through those change, chains, and it's a daily battle to do the right thing. But with Yeshua, I can overcome anything. I'm not perfect, I still sin, sin, then I repent and ask for forgiveness. But when I tell you that helping people that have been through what I've been through, it is the best feeling in the world, besides loving my beloved bride. That is why I'm here to tell you that I need your help, each and every one of you. Together, we can make a difference. On Thursday, January 25th, is a night that we will remember in our hearts. To reach out of self and to help another brother or sister in need. Well, there is nothing greater. Truly, I tell you, whatever you, whatever you did for one of least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 25, 40. That is why I want to be a part of the solution and help those that are struggling out there on the street, broke, and have nothing to their name. I know what it's like. I've been there. As a community, as one, we can help those living in the streets to give them a sense of hope. Matthew 25, 35 through 36 says this, for I was hungry and I gave you something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. The Arlington Police Department needs these items. Hygiene kits, blankets, jackets, emergency funds for housing, food, and most importantly, love from us. I hope many of you join me and Adam on the night of the 25th. We have a link and a QR code. 
where you can sign up and volunteer. In the meantime, we need all these items. I have listed, so let's start collecting them to build the kingdom of God for our children and the next generations to come. We will collect these items over time, and once we have everything together, we can start distributing them on our own. Please get with me after services to start this amazing opportunity to serve those in need. Psalm 41.1, blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Love you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Toda. I've got them on a minute. Okay, I'm all done with the time. I have four minutes. Let me ask you something. Anyone remember the first verse of the parasha? Parasha. Parasha Bo. What is the first verse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in English? Okay, let's just look it up. It's not a quiz. Brent, you probably know it. Come on. And God said to Moses, what did he say? Go. You sure? Go? Come. <laughs> you know the answer. I told you the answer. What is it written in the English Bible? What did God say to Moses? Come or go? It's different, correct? Do you have a Google translation? Uh, what? Google translation. Never mind. You don't have Hebrew, but the scripture in Hebrew is come, not go. The Lord did say to Abraham, go, go, lech, lech, go, go. But to Moses, he actually said, come to Pharaoh. That's very interesting. Why not go to Pharaoh? Okay, so we were supposed to discuss that today, but uh, we will uh, postpone that to next week, or if somebody really wants to know, he can ask me in Oneb. 
Okay, another very interesting thing is diligent. Diligent. So when you walk and you read the parasha, uh, you get to 12, Exodus 12, 42. Okay? Diligent. It says that the Lord is diligent. Where I will teach you the Hebrew phrase. Say, Lel Shimurim. Lel Shimurim. Okay? I have uh, 14 uh, slides of uh, presentation which will be sent to you if you uh, scan this code. This code will help us communicate when we don't have enough time or if we have a lot of information so people cannot uh, come and announce. Okay, this would be our Shabbat Shalom form. Okay, so you scan it and you will get uh, that Shabbat parasha, that Shabbat classes, and somebody actually improved me from last time. He told me that if I'm going to teach something in Hebrew, I must have a slide. Okay, I don't know who it was. He also promised to send me more uh, questions. He never did. So you're all welcome to send me questions. Okay, we will have all kinds of nice content from each and every one of the activities, spaces that we're going into. Okay, so you may uh, share that experience with us, share that space with us. Okay, more about the Jewish and the Israeli special holidays, which is the Holocaust Day and the Memorial Day. Okay, we are sharing the space with Israel. Okay, as Israel will mourn the Holocaust, okay, will not see any uh, comedy, will not see any sports. Okay, basically uh, uh, all the country will spend the day thinking about that so nobody will ever try and say that it didn't happen. Not today, not in 100 years. Okay, so they will always remember. Um, Memorial Day as well, okay, being a part of something that is now much more, uh, unfortunately, uh, in depth with all that ever happened in uh, October 7. Uh, Robert will uh, have Hebrew for Spani uh, Spanish speakers, will have empowering words, a lot of new spaces and activities, and the preaching. Can you put one of the slides? Oh, nice slide. Deja vu. Okay, it's an actual thing. Okay. Did you ever have deja vus? Yeah. Amazing. It's an actual thing. What happens when you have a deja vu? Times disappear. You are actually experienced a present which collides with a different time that was. That experience, that's something that eclectic, eclectic circumstances say, hey, I've been here, I know this, something feels familiar. Okay, let's keep on going. Scripture is like that, okay? Uh, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Now I've asked people about that, I'm getting a Christian re reaction, which is great. Let's go forward. The great day of the Lord. Here's a deja vu, go back, can you go back? For you know very well the day of the Lord. Let's go forward. There we have. The great day of the Lord is near. Near and hastening fast. The sounds of the day of the Lord, he's like three times deja vu, is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. Leil shimurim. That's the word in Hebrew. Keep on going. I'm going to read this in Hebrew. Whatever you see there bolded is actually that English phrase that we were deja vuing. At the end of the 430 years to the very day, now it uh, sounds like something, all the Lord's divisions went out of the land of Egypt. So this is the verse. You can see the shimurim, okay, bolded, and you can see it in very bold with Nikud, and then underneath. So we have one verse with lel shimurim, and another. You see, oh, you see the lel over there to the right. You can see over here to the right, and then you can see. I've put uh, underlining uh, marks over there. 
So scripture gives us deja vu. Joey, remind me the word that you said last week, that the father is taking two words from the mother. We talked about it. So they're, they're putting words. Okay. I call it deja vu. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll remind you. So that's deja vu for us. Move forward. Shimurim. Okay, this is the root. Protect, shield, and keep. Lel Shimurim or the day of the Lord. Tell me what is the day of the Lord, Brandt. What is the day of the Lord? What is the day of the Lord? No one knows. Hmm? His return. So why in the night? Why not in the day? Everybody will see him. It says so. Like a thief in the night. Is it the night? Is it the thief? What? What's up with that? Remember, people or the apostles writing those scriptures knew by heart the Old Testament. So everything is a deja vu. Now, let's go inside. The redemption of Israel exiting Mitzrayim was done on that Lel Shimurim, okay, where it said, let's go forward. Now at the midnight, not only night, but at the midnight, the Lord struck down every firstborn male in the land of Egypt. So it didn't say he struck only the Egyptian. So what happened? That's a question for Oneg. At the end of the 430 years to the very day, very day, it's always a day, it's a certain day. It's that day that the Lord keeps for himself. And in that day, he keeps everybody and protects everybody. Because the Lord kept a Leil Shimurim to bring them out of the land. He kept that specific day. And Yeshua said, only the Lord knows the date. But he have it, he have it on the saved in the browser. Out of the land of Egypt. This same Laila is to be a Shimurim again. Okay, we saw it in Hebrew, now we see it in English where I put the correct word to the Lord to be observed by all the Israelites for the generation to come. Now it's interesting because we read, we read in the prophets or even in the blessing for your sons and their sons, grand-grandsons. Over here is generations. So, Brent, that's a mistake, correct? No, no mistakes. Okay. So this is talking, this is talking an endless generations. So that Lel Shimurim, that specific day which is mentioned regarding Exodus and Lel Seder is for generations. And that specific day will be saved or saved by the Lord to keep for us. So he may redeem us. When Yeshua comes back, it has a certain attributes of midnight, before midnight, after midnight. Okay, at midnight, the mashchit, okay, cut down all those who were cut down. And only then Pharaoh told him, hey, exit. He called Moses and Aaron and said, exit. That's why we have exodus. Okay, exit. So we are all exiting. We're exiting this life and waiting for Yeshua to bring us to a new life. And that day is kept for us by the Lord. Starting in the first time that they exit, and now it is kept for us until Yeshua will come, and that will be like a thief in the night. In the night, like a thief, okay? Quiet, observant, silence. So we need to be prepared. So. Why didn't they kill all the Israelites? They did something. They did something. They got instructions and they went on and they did it. We can have a, a long conversation about what they did, why, etc., etc. But they did something. Okay? So that is left hand and right hand. We, we actually had that in the prophets. Uh, he will educate them by judgment, remember? Educate them by uh, judgment, okay? But deliver them by chesed. And we talked about those two hands, okay? Two redemptions. You will return to me and I will return. And as 
today uh, we read in the prophets there might be other uh, situations that we do not really want, but will come. Move forward. So this is Shamar, okay? And it shall come to pass when my glory pass by that I will put you in the cliff of the rock. We actually say rock when we sing it, okay? And will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Exodus 33, 22, where God is speaking to Moses in this verse. God is promising to protect. Okay, so when we go back, we remember shamar, shimurim, is keep, protect. Okay, or protect, shield, and keep. Now over here, it's a very interesting thing. Sur, sur is the word that is used in scripture. And when you just look at it again, you actually get some kind of a deja vu about running. That's interesting. Okay? Some people have their life running forward or running towards them. They don't pay attention and then they are tall, beautiful, good jobs, good grades. God is keeping them in the rock. For some people, there are struggles like David. He had a tough. Eventually, he said, what was the underlining statement of David. Shema Israel, yeah, of course, but bless the Lord, O my soul, correct? For every heavy hand, for every pit that you redeemed me for, for cleansing my soul, everything. Okay, but those of us who are kept are usually in a running situation. I always thought about the fact that Yeshua had only three years. That's running. He was actually running. It's like, imagine, up, down, Israel, people, okay? And exiting, imagine, exiting from Egypt. Midnight, Pharaoh, morning come, six hours. Everybody are leaving. That's running. How many people did exit uh, uh, Egypt? How many? By the thousands? No. By the hundred thousands? No. By the millions? Really? How did you get to that math? 600,000 men what? Able to war, go to war. 18 to, let's say, 40. If you are 18, you have brothers which are younger than you. If you are 40, you have uh, parents which are uh, older than you. So math gives us five million people. So they were running while exiting, okay? So that's another uh, aspect of Hebrew. Next one. We didn't put the funny? Oh, okay. So skew, do you know what skew mean? Skew, skew, that's a word in English? Skew, so that's the word I will use when, when I'll tell you now the Bible in English is skewing, skew. Now we have a skew, that means that we need to sit in Oneg and I will explain the Hebrew. Okay, because some levels of uh, uh, appearances are missed as you move from the Hebrew to the English. Okay, the English verse will say, Moshe, did you find it? Diligent, okay, that that night was, so basically somebody took it apart and restructure it in English so it will make sense to those who are English speakers and he's basically trying to explain how it goes that the night, the God is diligent. Diligent is not an attribute. Scripture in Hebrew doesn't say anything about diligent. We have certain words which is lel shimurim, that night which is saved for, by God for us to keep us and protect us. One word holding three different things that we need to remember. So sometimes there is a skew, okay? And I will do my best to try and uh, minimize the skew and uh, give it uh, the, the Hebrew context, if you will allow me, okay? I think I'm well past my 30 minutes. Um, 12, I owe you 12 next time. Okay, let's, uh, 
Let's do the prayer. Okay, this time I won't, won't forget. Let's do the prayers. Okay. And before that, let's pray. Again, this is something that uh, will help us communicate. Let's pray for a second.